Yeah, look, the preparation in advance coming here was very strategically planned. I knew exactly the numbers that I had to do. I was working very, very closely with Brian McChrystal, my coach, in relation to exactly what was required here. So I knew that inside the body was built perfectly for the job. You know, we had spent so much time working towards this. And for seven hours, I was so relaxed, so comfortable. Even coming to the event, you know, even the day before, I was so relaxed. I wasn't up to any high dough. Uh, I knew that all my teammates had, were playing their vital role and I personally as an athlete just felt ready. I was fully hydrated, I was fully fueled, the body was built perfectly for the job and from the first lap I knew, um, yeah I felt really strong, I felt really good, felt really relaxed, I felt in harmony with the track, I didn't feel as if I was fighting it, I felt relaxed. I feel great, I feel yeah. ready. But are your muscles, I want you to warm up a little. Just going to give a few updates on how Jason's getting on. At this stage, we're about three hours and 40 minutes into the event. Um, Jason's doing an average of about 39 kilometres an hour, and he's covered just about 145 kilometres at this stage. Uh, everything's going really well, I have to say. His pacing is very good. Um, he, he's gone out with the 24 hour record in mind as opposed to all the other records, and he's holding the pace that he needs to in order to get that record. And um, it's just, you know, it's just, it's hard really, you know, because when you get to seven hours and everything's going great and then all of a sudden, out of the blue, within three or four laps, the stomach started to go, which was obviously the effects of the anti-clockwise rotation going continuously left. Your body on, a, on the straight is level and then all of a sudden you're thrown up to 42 degrees on the bank and you get that, um, that, uh, that effect, like that G effect on a corner and um, that just alters your mind's uh, chemistry and, and uh, from talking to the riders here, you know, I was talking to a few of them, you know, some of them are Olympians and some of them are just back from the Commonwealth Games and you're here in their presence, it's just wonderful. And they said, look, you know, we do, you know, we do half hour sessions, we've got to come off the track because we just can't, we just can't do much more than that. So I kind of let you know the, 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 the magnitude of the actual experience itself, you know, so from seven hours on, then we just we basically then had to we basically then had to manage the situation. You know, in the endurance world, we know that things start to go wrong, and it's about a patience of trying to just endure it. I mean, that's the nature of the sport: endure it. And with with time, things pass, and the stomach, yes, did settle down. The crew done a great job in giving me some medication to get that under control on the go. Um, but unfortunately, the head just wouldn't go away. The dizziness was was terrible. Um, so much so that it got to a point where I couldn't hold the line any longer. I was starting to weave all over the place and then I had a couple of major uh, catastrophic moves on the track that could have ended uh, could have ended very badly. So uh, I think the team made the right decision to, to take me off the track uh, as hard as it was for them because they're as committed to the experience as I am. They know the hard work and dedication, commitment from sponsors and from the athlete himself to get to this point, so very hard for them to make a decision, and, but uh, the right decision was made. Um, really good positive things from the team, you know, we, had, we didn't really didn't have too much time to practice the handoffs before, and my niece, uh, Amy, Amy McGill, has been brought into the fold the last couple of races, to look after nutrition and hydration, along with my daughter Laura, and uh, there she was, um, you know, just every single lap, they are supporting me and then when we made the changeovers on the are every hour. Uh, 
Uh, I have massive respect for the people that have gone before me. Um, very few in the world have tried this, and I now know why. Uh, to Christoph Strasser, the, the world record holder, uh, and currently the number one endurance rider. Hats off, Christoph, strong boy. I um, was delighted to see that he sent me an email this morning and we spoke about back and forth about the race and he experienced exactly the same prob problem but he got it near the end of the race and he was able to see the light at the end of the tunnel and see it out but he was very dizzy and uh, was sick as well. Uh, unfortunately Mike came along at seven hours and I had a massive hole to climb uh, and it just wouldn't go away so it wasn't my day. That's not to say that I'm not coming back. What I've got to do now is I've got to step away from this weekend and um, just reassess what was right, what was wrong and what we can do uh, to improve the situation next time around and, and please God be back here this time next year and give, uh, give the record another attempt.